from this lecture onwards we are going to talk about the rules of inference in propositional logic and in this particular lecture we will talk about the basic terminologies involved in order to understand the concept of inferences and we will also talk about some examples to understand the terminologies in a better way. Let's consider our first term that is premise. Premise is a proposition on the basis of which we would be able to draw a conclusion. You can think of a premise as an evidence or assumption. Therefore, initially we assume something is true and on the basis of that assumption we draw some conclusion. Now what is the meaning of conclusion? Conclusion is a proposition that is reached from the given set of premises. You can think of it as the result of the assumptions that we made in an argument. Conclusion is the result of the assumptions that you made. And the assumptions are the premises. Let's try to summarize these two terms together. That is if premise is true then conclusion has to be true. That is what we are trying to say. Now we already know what is compound proposition if P then Q. Here P is the premise and Q is the conclusion. We know that if premise is true then the conclusion also must be true. Right? Let's consider the third term that is argument. Argument is a sequence of statements that ends with a conclusion or it is a set of one or more premises and a conclusion. Simple. Now let's talk about what is a valid argument. An argument is said to be valid if and only if it is not possible to make all premises true and a conclusion false. That is, it is not the case that if P is true then Q is false. If P is true then Q has to be true. Right? Now let's consider one example of an argument. If I love cat then I love dog. I love cat, therefore I love dog. Now, this is the first premise, let's say it is P1. This is the second premise, let's say it is P2. And this is our conclusion that is indicated by therefore. Hence, I love dog is a conclusion. Right? Now let's say I love cat is represented by P and I love dog is represented by Q. Now this statement is of the form P implies Q, right? This is simply P and here this is Q. So we can write this argument as P implies Q, then P, therefore Q, okay? We can also write this argument as P implies Q and P implies Q. Q. These are the two premises and this is the conclusion. Premises implies conclusion. Okay? Now, this conclusion can be true or this can be false. It depends on the premises. Right? We initially assume that all these premises are true. And in order to prove that this argument is a valid argument, we need to make this conclusion true. Because all premises are true, therefore conclusion must also be true. As P is true, therefore here also P is true. And if P is true, then Q must also be true. In order to make this compound proposition true, we cannot make this Q false. If we make this false, then this whole compound proposition becomes false, which is against our assumption. Right? Hence Q must be true. And if Q is true, therefore the conclusion must also be true. Right? Because our conclusion is Q only, Hence, this conclusion is also true. As there is no way we would be able to make conclusion false by taking premises true. And hence, we can say that this argument is a valid argument. Right? This is just an, another way of representing this argument. P implies Q and P. Why I am writing and over here? Because these two premises must be true right? It is not the case that one premise is true and the other one is false, right? So these two premises must be true and conclusion must also be true. So we can conclude that this whole argument is a valid argument. Let's consider one more example. Here I'm saying if I love cat then I love dog. Second premise is I love dog and the conclusion is I love cat. As this statement is of the form P implies Q, I love dog is Q, therefore P, because I love cat is P. 
can we say if p implies q is satisfied and q is satisfied then p also satisfied let's see initially we assume that p implies q is true and q is also true and we need to prove that p must also be true then only we can say this argument is a valid argument now as q is true then here also q is true and if q is true then p can be true or p can be false if p is false then false implies true is true and if p is true then true implies true is also true let's take p false now if p is false then here also p is false as we would be able to make all premises true and conclusion false hence we can say that this argument is an invalid argument right so the final conclusion is that whatever the argument we made over here is invalid 